Party Pace, Gumagalaw Music Video Launch at Nokal Makati with performances by GABA, Nameless Kids, The Diegos, The Leisure DJs, and Party Pace. February to Thursday, 8 p.m. It's free. Be there. Episode 82, Alive and Kicking. Oo. <laughs> Alive and Kicking. Nakatawa nga na naalala ko yung nakita ko yung poster ni Basti sa... Kinabahan ako eh. Yung sa Facebook, yung pinost ng jam. Oh! Puta nga rin saw that. Alright, I'll tell you something. I love... I don't know if you guys... Wait, wait. Are we even gay? Let's introduce you. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. okay. I was about to go into... Oh, nga. I was like, okay. it's one of those shows where there's no introduction. Fine, I can do that. Okay, Konting let's intro go. lang. Okay, okay. I mean, okay. yeah. Uh, our next guest is one of our one of my rock heroes na talagang I saw Atomica when I was 13 and then that shit blew my mind as in parang may Metallica tayo that I, I could be proud of and then it really resonated with me kasi parang ang bigat ang ganda ng lyrics and then when I delved deeper into it I, I also learned na sila yung one of the only bands well they are the only band in the Philippines na nag-release in Japan and US na oh, na Filipino band. So it's it's something for me na parang napaka like it, it's like what legends are made of so <laughs> like, So yeah. yun without <laughs> Should be it's the governor. Does you know, this what I mean san parang sabi nga nila na parang be careful and don't meet your heroes, diba? Pero Wala akong masabi, like, when we started sa D&D, Manuel was our first artist. Yeah, that's right. And then, when I met Basti, parang syempre, hindi ko rin sure. Pero, he's one of the coolest, most down-to-earth, and <laughs> most... Still here. Wild. Wild, <laughs> yeah. Wild na... Yun nga, so, without further ado, our please guest welcome for our guest. Me. For... Fuck you, man. Thank you. <laughs> episode 82, Basti at Ardi. Shit, man. <laughs> Thank you for driving out. Hey, man. That course, was the episode. Of course. That was it. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks for having me. It was good to be here. Excellent drink. Wait, let's start with the, yeah. with the Facebook post. <laughs> so, okay. So, Jam, man. So, have you guys been listening to Jam lately? Yeah. In the car. Yeah. It's, in the car. So, there's no more DJs and it's just, an, it just sounds, I don't know, but. I mean, I'm not saying that the DJs are bad or anything, but I just love what's happening. So, anyway, I got a message from, uh, from, um, Shit. Of course, I forget his name. <laughs> it's right the now. drinks. Oh, yeah, I'm man. Drinking. But um, uh, anyway, I get a message. I'll I'll fucking get it. The station oh. manager. Yeah, who's he's basically handling everything. Now, okay, no. right. And he's like, hey, if you got anything, you know, and um, send it over because you know we're we're putting stuff on and then we're we're gearing up to 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 finally make it a station again. You know, like the way a station is. But till then. Just give us some stuff. So anyway, I gave him and a song. Then, you mean a song? A song, yeah. So mm. I'm, 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 man, we're gonna be jumping off, like topic, topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so yeah, a song and um, God of Light. Yung God of Light. God of yes, Light. yes, that's that's the one. And so they did it, and he was like, "Um, give us a poster." And I gave him Eric, poster. Eric of Jam. No, 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 not Eric, man. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I'm just gonna <laughs> look it up already because I'm stupid when it comes to this stuff. But anyway, so. He says, uh, give me a song. So there. So I gave him that song. And then he goes, hey, can you can you give us a poster? You know how it is yes, nowadays, yes. man. It's all do it DIY. So so I gave him one. But I didn't put any effort into it. I was just like, God, like me. And then that picture. And then he was like, you know, because he's a friendly guy. And then, you know, and they, they, they want to make it nice, right? So he's like, okay, we'll we'll make it patira with our team, you know? Because I was like, okay lang ba? He's like, okay lang, but. Okay, give me lang that picture and we'll make it patira with the team. So I go, oh wow, thanks man, that's awesome. So yeah. And then all of a sudden my shit starts blowing up. <laughs> Basti! Nakita <laughs> mo! You know, and I'm like, what? What's going on? And then I look and I'm like, I put, I see the thing and my name and then it's a date and then it's like the Lord's light coming oh, and I got claimed and I was like... <laughs> You know, and then he called, he annoyed, and he he, he he apologized and said, hey, I'll change it. And I go, you know what, man. It's the Fuck best it. marketing. Uh, yeah, best marketing. So like, you, you can't pay for that kind of shit, you know? So fucking just let it. It's if so people meta. freak out, you know, then they'll freak out and they'll cry a little bit and they'll figure out I'm dead, I'm alive pala, and then they'll continue ignoring me again, you know? But till then, you know. 
So, so how lately you've been releasing singles, right? So, yes. What what what's the plan then? I mean, and and do you have a um, general ad, I mean plan of okay. going to be an album or no 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 strategy? I'm I'm gonna have an album. So throughout the pandemic, uh, I've I've been working with uh, Alan Confiado, um, and we've been exchanging ideas, and we wrote you know me and him we wrote a whole album's worth of material. What does he do? Like play guitar so, or yeah yeah yeah. Things? Um, guitar and then so, so basically the basically the producer well or there's a producer i was producing you're producing it. it okay um like i'll give him ideas and then he'll send me something and then you know the back and forth kind of thing where you're like okay this but what if we extend it or something like that um and then the final the final output was you know Basically, me and per, uh, and Frey Zambrano mm-hmm. that would have that, but but he would like record samples and stuff like that, like scratch, mm-hmm. scratch takes of the official song, and uh, we would build on that, you know, like even the lyrics and the melodies. No, and, that's all me. That's all. Like, you. Yeah. How would, do you? I would send it to him. Do you have? It's like, all a just guitar email, demo, email demo on guitar or just the vocals. Uh, so I have all these. I do vocals only. I do shitty guitar with vocals that has the melody. I do shit. Sometimes I'll even sing on somebody else's uh, somebody else's uh, uh, minus one, mm-hmm. just so he has the melody, mm-hmm. you know, um, and a good I- idea in the melody. Like like for example, Panay Abo. Um, that song. That was the first thing that we released from that album. What I did was, because I mean, shit, I can't write, right? I can't play music, I mean. So I need whatever <clears throat> conduit, if that's the word for it, I can find to get my idea across, right? So what I did for that was um, I knew the, 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 the what is this? The, the, the time, the beat. The time, yeah, yeah, the time I wanted for the song. And I had the melody, dun, 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 you know. So I looked for something, and I ended up finding... Um, uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Zero. There was mm-hmm. a guy on YouTube just playing the drums. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's so, a great hack. So oh, yeah, so so I sang to that. You know, bucket na ganito. What? I if we could look up sometime the no, but yeah. So I sang to that, and then that was it. And then he came with a a guitar thing, and then. Um, that we built from there. That's a yeah. very cool hack. A lot of people are asking, songwriters, like, how do you get uh, people to play for you or minus ones or what? Yeah. But, but I said, the rappers, they, they do that on someone else's beat. Yeah. And then they send it to a producer to make a similar vibe. That's the first time I've, I've heard a somebody rock. use a rock, in a rock tune in a, diba, parang someone's yeah. drum track yeah. as a guide. <laughs> Well, yeah, very cool. So there. Very cool. I'm gonna uh, do that. Here's, here's, <laughs> an, here's another half. When when I write when I'm writing lyrics and I don't have music, right? Mm-hmm. I will I will sing a song. Like if I'm writing, uh, I'm not singing it. I'm just writing it. Now, when you're writing lyrics, you need a a time. You need a certain shape. Uh, yeah, like a mel- like a melodic structure to the words. Mm-hmm. You know, so that they flow. So that you can come up with a whole a verse and a chorus and all that, but you need a you need a like this, mm-hmm. right? So I'll 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 write my lyrics based on somebody else's melody, like a Bob Dylan song, you know, which which usually has sometimes they're they're pretty complicated, but a lot of his earlier work it's simple, you know, it's just na 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 na. So I know it'll work. When I finally, because the way Wolfgang used to work was, they would do the music, I would do the, the 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 vocals and the the melody, and um, I would just basically match what I had on my notebook to what they had, you know, musically. So, as soon as I had a pattern that fit. And, of course, it had to fit also emotionally, right? But as soon as I had a pattern that fit to something, I knew it would work because 
the pattern has a has a cadence, has yes. a has a flow, like you said. So, so there, that's another thing that that I do. Great, right. great. Yeah. Since na mention man rin yung Wolfgang, so uh, back when you guys started, could you take us like back to how you guys oh, formed? Didn't in know, man. You know how many <laughs> drinks that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like a lot of drinks, man. Okay, what do you mean? That's, that's, like, right? Right? that's yeah, why we had a pre-show. <laughs> yeah. Pre-show, yeah, drink. that's right. I get a loose. Kopa tayo, kopa tayo. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Na, um, like 1992, right? You guys. 92. Yeah, yeah that was 92. Um. Well, it was just the usual, you know. Um, so I, I had no connection with Wolfgang or, or any of the members. We didn't run in in, in the same circles or schools, no. Mm-hmm. No, no. I mean, I don't even know if Wolf was in. But no, no. I mean, maybe they were in. Like Mon wasn't. Uh, Wolf was from La Salle, but I don't even know if I had seen him or maybe I'd seen him, but he, we, you know, we wouldn't talk or anything. It was just like that. Um, and, and I just had a, you know, a band with some friends of mine from high school and we, we were like a garage band, but I couldn't even, you couldn't even call us a garage band because we didn't even play in the garage. We played in the air conditioned room. We didn't even have a drummer. We would just play, you know, acoustic songs all night long and play. And then one day we were like, you know what, let's, let's. Start doing something, you know. We can't just live in this fucking room all the time. Who's whose house? Um, so he was a friend of mine named uh, Leo Valencia. Um, and there it was Leo on guitar, Jody on uh, Jody Valencia, his brother on bass, and uh, Miguel Mari was on uh, rhythm guitar. And um, who played drums? I was singing, we didn't have a drummer. Uh, yeah, jams. we did. We had a drummer who never played drums. We just said, "Okay, you're the drummer," but he never had drums, so he'd just sit in the room and be like, "That's great, that's great to do this with his hands." But we never got a drum set, you know. So fuck it, yeah, fine. You're the but drummer. he played the shows. No, we didn't do shows, man. Oh, we were just in that room. Oh, it was, uh, yeah, yeah. So what was, was the most pathetic band in the we world, you know? know? But I mean, we had a lot of fun playing music, which is the point, right? Yeah. We just what's the name of the band? Doing, oh man. You sure you want me to say that? Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we call ourselves <laughs> Sin City. Sin City. <laughs> That's a good name. That's a good name. It's terrible, man. It's terrible. What, what songs did you guys? Um, so we would, man, all the stuff that we would uh, jam in that room were like all the 80s uh, glam metal stuff, which is the greatest things, you know, when you're a kid and you're growing up and you're, playing an acoustic guitar and you you know and just shouting out lyrics and songs those are the best songs you know because it's just it's just all a hundred percent fun those songs there's nothing hard about them or anything it's just great great fun um so there i what how did you gravitate to vocals i mean how did you become the vocalist so the the reason they got me was because they heard i sang so it i was at a party and we had left the party and we had walked to this park and we had walked to this bridge and again it was one of those glam songs because it was that time of the it was the time when glam was the biggest thing and and i think it was uh, maybe i remember no not i remember you it was uh, every rose has its thorn of course that's where all musical <laughs> journeys start every rose has its fucking thorn anyway so there and then everybody was singing it and I was in the back, I was just quiet, and then I just sang also, and then everybody was like, hey, you can sing? And I'm like, and yeah, I guess, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I never really sang, so, so there. And then they pestered me for like, come on, you gotta join the band, you gotta join the band. So I joined the band and we stayed in the room for we fucking take four years, man. For uh, pestering Yeah, you. man, no, really, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, if it wasn't for them, shit, who knows? They'd how'd probably you meet, be a doctor. How'd you meet the Wolfgang boys? Okay, so here it is. So Miguel Mari mm-hmm. is the uh, cousin of Miguel Ortigas. Oh. Mm-hmm. And then, so Miguel Mari, uh, Miguel Ortigas ended up drumming for us because of that connection. And he was like, hey, man. In Sin City, Miguel. Yeah. But, okay. uh, but yeah. So, yeah, Sin City. So, the way it worked was uh, Razorback was playing a, a house party. And then 
I guess they needed another band, so he knew Miguel was, um, you know, he knew Miguel, Miguel was already was, in Razorback. Yes, he was okay. in Razorback. So Razorback was basically playing the house party, and then he knew that his cousin Miguel had asked the band, so he was like, "Hey, come on, you guys play too," you know, mm-hmm. part of their small bands. And then we said, "Oh, we <laughs> we don't have a drummer," and he's "Suck a drum for you, just give me, the, <laughs> give me the songs," you know. And so we we went and we played that and it was fucking awesome. And next thing you know, we were playing when they played in Calle, you know, they would have us play and, and sing and and it was in Calle where I met Manuel and I met Wolf. And then there and that was it. Calle, tell us about Calle. Fucking Calle was awesome, man. <laughs> it was Calle a was little bar in Makati. Yes, mm. in uh, uh, C- Carlos Palanca Street. C Palanca. Mm. Yeah, C Palanca. It's now a. I think now it's a bank. <laughs> Everything becomes <laughs> a bank <laughs> nowadays, you know. Either Club Red is now McDonald's. So you know, really? In in Scout Tobias, oh, yeah? it's now McDonald's. Oh, fucking hey. Well, Dread in in Ed's is what a shooting range. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> At least that kept its metal, you know. Uh, you know. So tell us about Calle. So Calle was crazy. I mean, Calle was more uh, Razorbacks house. Yeah, that was their that was their shit. Like, um, when you went there, you knew it was theirs because they were the you know they were the kings. The way they how like, did it start? Is it an all week uh, venue or just the weekends? It started uh, because it was just on the weekends. Mm. So Razorbacks so that's why it's was called Weekends Live. So no, no, no. We can't. That, that's, that's different. That's, yeah, that's, that's the one in Atrium. That was, yeah, that was us. That was your band. That was okay, where okay. we were. It's, so, Kalia, it's okay. Let's do Kalia because that's that's wild. Okay. So, Kalia was, it was just a regular bar and then they asked um, Razorback, hey, you know, you come, we play. So, they played and they didn't know what they were getting into because, fuck, what ended up happening was people started going in there, you know, when Razorback broke, it started becoming a madhouse, you know, and... Put the Razorback fucking took over. The way it used to work was when you would go in, you would come down. Have you ever been there? Yes, you guys yes, ever been? yes. Okay, so you go down these stairs, open the door, and that's the bar. Uh, the band, the cross, right? It's Razorback. all smoke. Yeah, it's, it's all smoking. smoke and fucking <laughs> sticky floor yeah. and rum coke and put that. And, and uh, at, the, at the end of that bar was Razorback, but they didn't like it. They didn't like being at the end of the bar because when people left, they could just leave. So they were like, fuck that, no. We want to be on the other side so that when people leave, they have to pass us and we can give them the dirty fucking look, right? <laughs> so shit. Because they wanted it, they said, move us to the other side. They fucking moved the whole stage, man. They moved the whole stage to the other side and that was it. So nobody fucking left, right? Because the last thing you want is Miguel Ortigas looking at you when you're fucking leaving. <laughs> have you seen Miguel Ortigas look yeah. at you? Bad, right? oh, man. You know so, so yeah, so that happened, and then man, it just started. How, what what developing. you guys talk about in when you when you met the guys in Calle? What do you mean? How'd you end up talking? I mean, let's form a band, you know. With oh no no that. no! It wasn't it wasn't like that. It was uh, yeah, it was like uh, I think Manuel and uh, so basically the genesis of Wolfgang is all because of uh, Miguel Ortigas. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for Miguel Ortigas. None of this would have happened because could have been Miguel Gang, no? Miguel, Miguel Gang, Gang. <laughs> yeah, man. Diana, you're right. Could have been a lot cooler, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, uh, so everybody knew Miguel. That was the. That was it. That was the reason. None of us knew each other. Everybody knew Miguel, and everybody at some point had said, "Hey, man, I want to form a band. If you know anybody, let me know." Hey, I know somebody, you know, and then there, and then there, and then and then me. And then I think it, the way it happened was I was at Kalia watching uh, Razorback, and Wolf and Manuel had already talked and gotten on board with each other about doing it. And then they came to me and they said, hey, you want to, you know, you want to join us? They had seen me sing, of course, you know. And, and I said, sure. And that was it, you know. But wait, wait, wait! Back to this fucking thing. So they put the so <laughs> laser back. Yeah, they put the stage there, right? Yes. And then I hadn't gone for two weeks, and then in the, after the two weeks, I come back, and there's a there's a door beside the stage like this, that that they ended up 
apparently there was a space behind the wall there that they ended up saying, okay, that's the band room and we're going to make that the band room. So, shit. So I went in there. I was like, wow, you guys got a band room? Yeah. And this is it. This is the only, the only reason I want to say this because of this. This is how much they own this fucking place, right? There was, you know, those big giant refrigerator air cons? Yes. Like the big ones back in the day, right? And they have these panels that come off like that. So we're all sitting there like that. <laughs> and Miguel Ortigas is like, oh, I gotta take a piss. And he gets up, walks behind me to the air con, <laughs> takes off the panel and just pisses in the fucking panel, puts it back and then sits again. I'm like, Tangana, no wonder this place smells like shit. God damn it, Diana. This is where you guys, they just take a leak in the fucking air con. Ay, nako. It's and, good times, man. Good times. And then, uh, like, RJ Jr. jam kayo, right? As Wolfgang, and then... Oh, shit. Can you I tell us about that? Nope. I have uh, no recollection <laughs> about... Uh, I think we did, yeah, we did RJ Jr. Jam, but I can't... The, what I can remember is we did... Uh, we did the that acoustic uh, RJ thing. There was like an RJ show. That was uh, acoustic. And it was hosted by... Um, Tangana. What's his name? Pare. Here we go again. <laughs> Charlie Ismael. Charlie Fuck, how can I forget of Charlie? Of the breed. Of the breed. Yeah, oh. he hosted the show. And then we went on and we played acoustic there, semi-acoustic. And, you know, that was one of the, also one of the steps that mm. started, you know, when we played that there. Building. Yeah. I think that was one of the first times people actually saw us. I don't even mm. know. I don't think we had music yet that we, that we had written. Yeah, I don't think so. We just did all covers. And then yeah. towards the writing of the first album, how how was the process like, and what what were you guys discussing back then? The first album was uh, the usual, the usual first album process where it's just I have this, I have this, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's see lyrics. I hadn't, I didn't even know anything about writing or anything like that. It was. Uh, that was more of a slog, you know. Um, but yeah, it was just that. Get in the room every day. Who's, who's, whose house? Okay, so we would uh, rehearse. Um, man, it's been so long, dude. I know. Uh, <laughs> there was a practice pla- place in Makati. Actually, the guy who was the sound guy in Calle, mm-hmm. he had a little black practice place in in Makati. Makati Avenue in that basement. No, no, no. It wasn't the basement. It was, it was actually a house. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, we would just go there and just like you know work it out. I remember darkness fell and Manuel. I remember when Manuel first played it and I had a melody and I started singing it and it sounded good, but I couldn't get the verse and the chorus and that because. I don't know. That song doesn't really have a a verse and a chorus and a, it just kind of go, you know. <laughs> and I remember he, he got mad at me. I was like, I just sang the verse and the chorus and the thing. And I'm like, I don't even know where any of it is, man. You know, you keep changing shit around. Why don't you repeat some of it and not sing on that thing? Anyway, we f- we figured it out. But but yeah. <laughs> And then um, it it went the debut album nyo went platinum one year for in the first year right so surprise or what was the feeling like well we, well I'll tell you this we didn't we didn't I mean of course when you record your album you think it's gonna be the shit right? uh-huh. it's gonna be, yeah okay. <laughs> but but we didn't really think it was gonna do anything you know what I'm saying yeah. you know what I'm saying right yes, I mean you, you but wait did who, you, how'd you get signed did Wally uh-huh. No, find you. No, 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 no. So we were Ivory first. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I thought you were Sony right away. No, no, no. Second album was second Sony. album. Was so Sony. our first album was uh, Ivory Records, and um, who signed you in Ivory? Neil. Neil Gregorio. Of Mere Mercy. <laughs> Neil. Neil oh, Gregorio. Hi, hi. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Mere Mercy. He really? Was, yeah, yeah. He was Mere Mercy. Well, Neil. He. He was with Ivory. He's still, he was, he's still in the record industry right he's now. Right? He's with. Warner. Warner, yeah. yeah I think Warner. Yeah. Yeah. So I just he signed also. Oh, he was metal. That's why. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. are you guys doing in Ivory? Oh, it was Neil. Okay. Yeah, so Neil Neil came up to us. Uh, actually, what happened to us was one, one you know, somebody offered us 
because back then it was all about compilations, yeah, compilations, yeah, yeah. you know. And we said no, we're not, we're not gonna do a compilation. We, we want an album. So they left, and then Neil came, like maybe two weeks later, and he's like, oh, it's okay, tara, tara, ano na. So okay, sure, we did it. And uh, Keddy Sanchez, you know Keddy Sanchez? Yes, yes. He was a producer for the mm. first album. He was the one who produced that. Um, how was it recording the first album for you guys? Because nobody really knew how to make no. metal albums mm. in the professional pop studios. Mm. Mm -hmm. So how was it? Was it was it a struggle? Like we want it heavier, or how do we get the guitar sound and the drum sound? It was sounds? yeah. It was. Uh, I, I don't know if it was a struggle because I'm out of that, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you when it comes to mixing and all of that. I know what I like to hear. Like if you give me something, I'll say, okay, I like it or I don't or can you raise a little bit. But when it comes to actually sitting down and doing all of that shit and I, I can't, it all sounds, I just end up fucking it up. Um, so sound wise, that was Wolf, Manuel and and Mon. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Mon was part of that too. Rest in peace, Mon. Yeah. Salute. Um, Where'd you guys record? Green first Hill one. Sound. Fucking mm -hmm. Green Hill Sound, man. When Puta. The most recording studio looking recording. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, like, I know what you're saying. Like how, like how you see them in the movies and in the pictures and shit like that. Yeah, man. That was it. And he that was, was old like, in wow. the 90s already. Yeah, man. It was fucking ancient. <laughs> you know, and then I remember like. They had all this gear that they let rot because of the 80s came and I don't think anybody really had, had, you know, we're using gear to record. Yeah. And when we had gone in, the, the engineer was like, yeah, we'll just connect, plug the, 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 the guitar, guitar straight, straight to the board. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, when I was like, what? <laughs> That's fucking, no. <laughs> you know, we're going to mic it and we're going to do, you know. And um, so there, but, you know, it was great. Me, Shit, I didn't know what I was doing, you know. Once, like, I'll sing something right, and then that red, you know, that red light, when that fucking red light comes on, and then you just can't do what you just did. <laughs> Everything sounds like shit, and, you know. And, and like, I was really loud. My vocals were really loud in that. Because I had no idea, like I said, I had no idea what, I, what, what was comfortable for me or anything. I was just basically figuring shit out. And... I guess everybody else likes their vocals really loud in the in the headphones. In the headphones, you know. I hate it. I don't want to hear myself. I want to hear the music and just just a little bit of me, so I know I'm not, you know, out there. Um, but yeah, so so I just it would really I I get conscious, you know, hearing myself. But eventually, I figured it out. But yeah, man, yes. like even singing, you know. I was more singing the song for the sake of singing the song right, not singing the song emotion. You know what I'm saying? And the this is the first album. The first album. I mean, but there was a producer there telling yes. me what to do, so I guess, you know, and people like it, so I guess I did it okay in the <laughs> end, right? But, but like now, I'd sing that shit a lot easier because I know, I know. What you want. What you yeah, want. I know how to sing, you know. Nux. I know so, how to sing. But Finally <laughs> learned, man. <laughs> Only took me thirty fucking years. When you guys released the album, did you like? Did you have a backup plan, or were you thinking like, "Oh, if this is it, I'm gonna be a vocalist of Volgang. That's my career." No. Or what was the what was the plan? Then? No, no, nah, nothing. No, we were just thinking of putting out a great fucking album, you know, and our biggest thing was to get it on the radio and hear it on the radio and that was it we weren't thinking of like oh we're gonna we're gonna be you know yeah and all no none of that it was just that was what was in front of us that was the that was the 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 task at hand so that was what we were focused on you know? was weekends live already happening at that time yes so weekends live that's how that's how uh, what's his name um Neil came to us. Oh, okay. Mm. Tell us about Weekends Live. Ano yung connection with Kalye? No, no connection No connection. With Kalye, okay. yeah. Who I started mean, Weekends Live? Oh. Uh, <laughs> dude, I have no idea. Even the names, man. I don't I know. know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know them, but I can't I can't remember their, their names, How'd you guys man, end up but, playing there? And, you know. Um, 
you play there almost every weekend at one because at that, point. that became that became our home base our home base yeah so so the way it worked was uh, friday was uh, razorback in Calia and saturday was us in weekends live so the owners had just you know asked us to audition or we had sent them a thing saying hey can we audition and we did and we got the gig you know we were playing in we were playing in a in a little bar on Makati Avenue called San Tropez, mm. which was actually a gay bar, man. <laughs> yeah, it was a gay, it was a gay karaoke bar, and it was it was split like in two, like this. There was a small little thing here, like really small, like <laughs> like this small. <laughs> and I remember because the thing was cut into two; it was divided into two. And this is my first time going in there. And of course, me being me, I went into the wrong one, right? <laughs> so I go into this small place. And I'm like, how the fuck are we going to play in this thing, man? This is like ridiculous. This is so small. And then somebody came through the, the side door. I'm like, no, it's this side. And then I went in and that, I was like, ah, oh, okay, this is more. So anyway, that, the guy who got us that gig was Jim Garcia. See, I remember that. And we were playing there. And that's kind of where we, you know, we honed our, our, our skills. Who else played in Weekends Live? A lot of people played in Weekends Live. What yeah. do you mean, like the regulars? Yeah, the, the, the regular bands. Um, I remember... Uh, Advent Call? Car, yeah, Carl yeah. Yeah, Advent Call. Advent Call was... Uh, they, they played were, like five sets. <laughs> yeah, man. They were, they were the Friday. Ah, uh, they were uh, Friday with Razorback. No, no, no. Razorback oh. was in Ah, in Carl, yeah. They were Friday in, in, in Weekends, weekends live. live. Yeah. And then we were Saturday. So those were the two bands. Five bikes. sets. I could, couldn't, still to this day, I can't believe yeah, it. Man, that's five right. sets. What do you think Carl split? That's like, man? It's that's like, like 50 <laughs> so At least 50 <laughs> songs. Yeah, that at is least. ridiculous, man. That is crazy. The yeah. stamina of that band. Solid, Silla. They were solid. And and uh, the, uh, the level of the first set, the performance What's level the of the first, yeah, was the same as the level of the, the fifth. The first set or, starts or at 9, level. the last set is like around 2 a.m. And yeah. it was the same. Uh, yeah, man, it was the same. Uh, those guys, solid, solid, solid guys. But they were all, you know, they were also, they were all more or less seniors. Yes, you know, they, they had were. They were been doing it like, yeah. you know. They are playing the Malate scene. Hey, here's yeah. our refills. Yeah. Ui, wow. Refills. And then Shit, how, how was it slow, like, like from releasing Young Thank Friends? You. Sorry. Which well, young first yeah, album, and then you guys got to tour Japan, right? We didn't. So indie. This is indie. <laughs> um, well, we didn't tour Japan until later, long, long. Mm. You know, it was like okay. So we had that was with Ivory. Then we did a uh, Samanlin with yeah. Sony. Yeah. How'd you end up in Sony? Yeah, that's funny. So. Um, we wanted out of our contract with Ivory. Why? Yeah, because why? Because Sony. Uh, because Sony uh, offered you a better yeah, deal. Yeah. No, they, they didn't offer us a deal. Uh, they just said, hey, we're interested. Mm. And we didn't get anything from Ivory. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't know how Ivory is now. I haven't spoken to them or, or anything. Maybe they've changed or whatever. But back then, it was the regular way a record company is, which I guess is more or less the way it is now. That we're not going to put any money into you until you show signs of life. Mm. You know, even if that's what's in the contract, you know. Like the contract was like uh, promotion and posters and stuff like that. And there was, there was, none of, there was none of that. So we were, we were kind of, you know, disappointed in that. And Who was managing you at the time? Was it already? We, uh, were we already with Patrick? Did we get Patrick? Redbird, you know yeah. Redbird, Patrick. Pulumar. Yes, I, I know, yeah. I know Patrick. Yeah. Um, yeah That's Redbird. how I know you guys from Patrick. From Pat, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you know, why we call him Redbird. No. Right? Why <laughs> <is> Redbird? <laughs> Pulumbarit, pulang burat. <laughs> Redbird. That's it. That's, okay, okay. that's it. So okay. anyway, yeah. So that was it. Sony, you know, Sony was a good opportunity. It was an international company mm -hmm. and and all of that. And they said, mm -hmm. okay, you know. So we were like, all right. So we went to Ivory and we said, release us from our contract because we're not happy. And then, uh, man, when we were recording, when we were recording that first album, we had all these songs. We gave them the demos and they were like, oh, no, no, no. We want more Darkness Fell. 
We want we want the whole album <laughs> to be the, like that. <laughs> but like, yeah, we're like, but that's we, it's that that's it already. You can play that ten times and then that's it. That's the ten that. Y- no no no. We want the whole like so. so okay. No. Wait. And we and then they ended up giving it. Thank 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 them though that you know thank God that they, that they released they, you guys. Yeah, that they actually did. You know, they they gave us what we we were asking. If they didn't, then fuck. Who knows? So I guess to them, you know. But anyway, so. So there. So, we went into the office. In Sony? Or no, in in Ivory. Ivory. Is that because we Cobal? had to get out. Ivory was in Green Hills. Green Hills. Green Hills. Yeah. Green Hills across from Annapolis. the Vira Mall and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The main. I think until now they're still mm. there. No, no, no. They moved. I, nah. I think yeah, that's they Alpha. Moved. They were in the big silver building. Mm. I think that building's still there, but it was a big silver mm. building. Um. But yeah, man. We so we went into the head, the, the the head of the guy, and we said, "Hey, we want to get out of our contract." And he was like, "No, <laughs> no. You have you have one more album with us. We're gonna mm-hmm. hold you to it. You have to give us that album." And then Manuel was like, "Okay, well, if that's the case, we'll we'll do a whole album of just F, <laughs> F. We'll just play F for for fifteen songs." <laughs> And he was like, "Nine, if you want to give us that, we'll give it. That's what, yeah, that. But we're gonna, okay." And then you know, back and forth discussing, wala, wala, wala. He didn't want, and he was. And then I remember we were like talking, and it was like, I know. And then, Mon. You know, Mon, Mon, under his breath. He said, he said, shit. Like yeah, he just dropped the S, but he didn't say it to him. He just said, like, shit. Put the guy <laughs> freaked out, man. Ha! Huh? Shit! 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 Kajan! Uh, Get out of my office! Nobody makes more um, uh, 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 And <laughs> when he got so mad, right? He got a piece of paper and he threw it. But he was so fucking mad, he got the paper and he threw it to Stina. Shit, shit. He didn't say Tangina, he said, Shit, shit, Kajan! Wala shit, shit, dito, ha! He got the paper and he threw it. <laughs> And the thing is, he didn't crumple it well, so when he threw it like that, it went like this. <laughs> and it was the slowest thing. So all of us, ah, we started laughing. So he said, get the hell, get out of my office, get out, get out. So fuck, we got up and we left and that was it, that man. Was, oh, okay. And then we went to, we next, I think the next day we were meeting with Sony. Uh, yeah. I think we're okay, I think we, we, we got out of our contract. And Come then, on, don't say any bad words. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, but that was the thing, it was shit, you know, shit. Thing. And then, uh, I think Wally said, took over from there, and he was like, because we had said what happened. And then Wally was like, okay, okay, don't, don't go, <laughs> don't, don't talk to them anymore, we'll, we'll talk to them. And then there, so we got Wally's cool. Wally's awesome, man. I love Wally. Wally, Wally Chamsai, Chamsai. Yeah, yeah. man. Badass, man. And Wally. then when you guys went to Sony, don't, you guys Sony let us do whatever the yeah, fuck we yeah. wanted, man. We were the first we were the first band that they signed. You released in the US too, right? Like that was that was later on. Ah, later yeah, on. Yeah, we, we, we had to focus here, Muna. Um so yeah, and while you said go, you do it, you know. And puta, we gave him songs. We were listening to Yes and we were mm. listening to, you know, all the prog stuff and so shit. The album had all this weird shit that, you know, <laughs> and they they liked it. They dug it, you know, and they put it out, you know. You guys were pretty young at the time to listen to to stuff like Yes and Yeah. Well, I, it, that's Mon. Mon mm. Mon's old, you know. Mon's, Mon was the oldest, and he he introduced a lot of that stuff to us. You know, Wait, I want to I want to bounce back because I, okay, I saw okay. you, I see your shirt. It's Steely and the Doobie yeah. Brothers. What what was music at home? Anong sounds so my dad was Airpad. cowboy. Cowboy. Um, the country cowboy. Country or? cowboy, but but the good shit, you know, Waylon and then Willie and um and uh, Charlie Daniels, if you consider that country. Um, but yeah, it was you know I went from ABBA to to because um, my sisters all loved the ABBA stuff and the Beach Boys and they were and older. They were older. Sisters. I'm the youngest. Yeah. Mm. 
And uh, yeah, Doobie Brothers, Steely Dan, the works, you know, a lot of classic rock. Yeah. Okay, back to the second album that yeah. you recorded in Trax. Was uh, it Trax already? I think it was Trax. No, no, no. It was Hit. Hit, hit mm, Productions. Hit Productions Who was where we it? did, uh, I know. It was produced by Perf. De Castro. Mm. Yes. Perf De Castro, yes. yes. Who's here, by the way, right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, he's here. He's we got to get him in the show, too. You should. Anyway. He leaves end of February, so you got okay, time. Okay. Anyway, so yeah. So Perf was uh, one another guy from the scene who we had known. Um, and we tapped him to produce it, you know. And uh, yeah, we did. We, 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 Kabalik tara ng Green Hills. Ito naman yung pinaka-modern studio yeah, at the time. Yeah, that was at the time. And at it was... Time. Ugh, it, I mean, not, you know, but you go from that with the warmth and the bag you feel <laughs> and the fucking big ass ceilings and wood to these geometric Modern. small yeah man I think I was singing in a, <laughs> in a little thing like this you know and I and I remember it was really a vocal booth you go in and you do the, the door which is like zoot zoot then you open mm. the other door zoot zoot and then it's like a little refrigerator yeah it's not the same you know because in 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 G sound, yeah, Green Hill sound. That was in a, in a room, you know, like with a piano and everything. It was like a big ass room. Live room. Yeah, live room. You know, um, but yeah, it was the same. You know, I was still, I don't know, man. I Did you feel more free because you were Sony? Like, let you do all of these things? No, it was the same. It was. I mean. When we were recording the first album, again, Ivory, to their credit, they did not... Like, Neil was there. But, you know, Neil was just there to say... Like, every song, like, we'd be recording a song, Neil would come in, oh, tata, kain, kain, mo, <laughs> And that's it. And we'd go eat in the canteen and then go back, sing some more. Oh, tata, kain, mo, That's what he kept doing, man. Come, kain, 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 mo, That's why, if you look on the tape, there's all the thank yous. His name Neil Neil Kain Munatayo Gregorio. Right. <laughs> because that was it. Kain Munatayo. It's like, oh yeah, we're still recording the album. Pare. No, no, no. Kain Munatayo. Mami ane. Kain Munatayo. Okay. So there. Um, but yeah, nobody was like ever. I mean, with the exception of we want five darkness spells, right, mm. at the beginning. But once everything started, it was no. Go ahead. Same thing with Sony. Go ahead. And then what was your plan? Like, parang. Ang prolific rin eh, like tuloy-tuloy, uh, Seminel and Worm, and then mm. uh, Serve in Silence. So. There was no plan, man. There was never any. That was the thing. We never had a plan. There was never like a, okay, we got to make this. Yeah, I mean, this, yeah. And then every year we have to, like to make an album. Yeah, it was just, yeah. I mean, like if the, if, if the record label said, okay, we need an album, okay, uh, then we'd make an album, you know. But it wasn't like, okay, we have to make this kind of album or that kind of album or, or you know. It was whatever at that time and whatever came out naturally, that was it. But it was never like, okay, now we have to hit the young mm-hmm. girls, so yeah. let's do this. And now we have to hit the, the Satan worshippers, so let's do this. And now we have to, you know what I'm saying? Wait, how was yeah, it, yeah. How was it uh, playing the schools as a metal band in the 90s? There's great, a lot of, man. ano, diba? Madaming bawal pag, yeah. pag Catholic schools. Oh my God. So UST, mm. I think we got some girls kicked out. <laughs> They had us, man. I'm telling you. So we get. And that's bawal, bawal, and the nuns are always. The nuns. You know, our first ever gig. Do you know our first were the Wolfgang's first gig was no. Sanctuario de San Jose, the one in Forbes, the church. Mm. That was our first gig, man. The nuns were like, what are these? What are these long hairs? You know. Actually, long hair. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, we, you know. Although that USD gig, man. So, so at that time, that's another story. At that time, we were we we decided to like, hey, let's do something with the show where it's not just us. Let's bring on a magician. <laughs> Where'd you get magician? a magician? Yeah, friend, man. Yeah, friend, man. His name's Jolly. We called him Jolly the magician. But great guy. But you know, he was. I don't even know where we met him. He just showed up one day and then he became our friend. You know, he's a nice guy. Um, like the only. Act that I've seen in the Labasa magician was Michael Jackson. <laughs> well, there you, you go. We, did, we it. did it too, man. We did it back in, I don't know, when did he do it? I don't know. Maybe he saw one of our you shows. We saw you guys in UST. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, we did it in Dread too. In Club Dread. Guy. No, no, but the one in UST. So this guy was so palpable. Okay. <laughs> the magician. The magician. 
let's do the dread first. So we had this show in dread. Which dread? Timog or Edsa? The Edsa. Edsa. So they the stage is like this. Yes. And there's like a little dressing room here, mm-hmm. right? There was like a little like you go down the steps and there's like a dressing room. It's like a little yes. With a banyo, I think mm. I'm not sure. Anyway, there. Yung ano aircon. Yeah. <laughs> na hindi ko magana. <laughs> Anyway, so so we were doing this magic show thing, right? And then, so before the thing, we're outside at the bar section, and he's telling because we didn't plan anything, right? And he's like, "Bast, bast, okay, ganito to. I'm gonna do my magic to the crowd. Jump us aside, naghihintay. Okay, then I'm gonna make like that smoke bomb. Okay, smoke bombs. The whole place will fill up with smoke." Pag gumano na yung smoke, pag nakita mong gumano yung smoke, okay, umakyat ka bababa ko, pag ano ng smoke, nandiyan ka na. So it's like magic, right? So me, I'm like, okay, that makes okay. perfect sense. That sounds fucking great. Okay, let's do that. We'll do that. Okay. So I'm waiting there. Now when you tell me to do something, I'm gonna take it seriously and I'm gonna do it. So I'm not, I'm not smoking a cigarette or I'm watching because I'm waiting for the smoke. Mm, this, yeah. So he's doing the magic trick with the glove and the fire in the hand and all this shit. And then he does this. <laughs> and the smoke rises to his ankle. <laughs> so I'm like that. And I'm like waiting for the smoke. And then while the smoke's around his ankle, he looks at me and he's like. <laughs> he's doing this. Like, come on, come on, let's go. Before it, before it disappears, the smoke. And the whole audience can see him going like this, right? Because there's no smoke. It's down here. So I'm like, that's it? But then I just walk around and it's like, stupid. <laughs> the UST thing, the man, he's doing the magic thing also. And there was like a fire thing. He did some <laughs> fire thing. And it, he spilt it on the stage. So the stage caught fire. Oh my God. Not and, oh my God. And so the, the stage is on fire. <laughs> and then a roadie, Dick, his name is his name's actually Dennis. I find out later on, but Mon just called him Dick because he's a dick, though. <laughs> anyway, so he sees a fire on stage. So what do you do? Throw water. Right. So he throws water. Apparently, this is not that type of a fire. Oh, so it spreads lalakas. and got bigger. Lalakas. Wow. And we were like, holy What's shit! That? I think What's we all venue? ended up running. The it med was a building. Theater. I can't remember. It's the only it was, the, the theater back in the 90s. It was an 90s. actual theater. Maybe it was uh, the Met the building. The Met building. Yeah. But it was a And it's a an legit, old building. Yeah, right? it was old. Wood floor. Wood, yeah. Good it stage. Legit, it was a good yeah, stage. Yeah, it was a great stage. Not as... Not as it's we, a provincia. <laughs> well, yeah, I, we hung out a lot nung ano, the Tanduay tour. Mm. That was fun. What, what are your memories of that? We call each other classmates. Classmate, yes. Pag, na, pag narinig mo yung classmate, that's Kamikaze, Chikusai, you know, everybody in the Tanduay tour. Mm. Tell us about that, that experience. It was great. It was a great opportunity. Um, what day did you get drunk? Usually, got, there's two days. <laughs> yeah, two days. Week. All, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I just yeah. picked one. I just yeah. picked one. We would just, we would just go for gold. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but usually, gold. usually, of course, you try to, you know, not as drunk as you try to keep it for this. I know, but sometimes you can't help it, you know, because it's like a whirlwind. Because of Jays. Yeah, once, once, you know, and then SpongeBox. When SpongeBox, does. so SpongeBox for all you guys who don't know is this character <laughs> that ended up happening because Rico Blanco, who doesn't usually drink, he doesn't drink, by the way. But I don't know. He si got Jay drunk, lang man. Sa yeah, kanya. He got mm. drunk. And then they, there are so many boxes backstage because you oh, have all these, just the empty boxes from the from the setup and all. And I don't know, somebody had, I don't know if it was Rico or Jomal, I think it was Rico, who cut cut holes, am I right? Yes. Yeah, he cut holes in the arms. <laughs> And then he stuck it, and then he was looking around with the box head, and then like that, and that was it. That was the birth of SpongeBob. Sponge and it was someone else. Not it wasn't Rico all the time. It was no, it was Joe always Malo different. Rico. Sometimes there were six SpongeBobs <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> you know, paunahan. Who could make? We well, even started designing it. Pagandahan ng SpongeBob design. Like like Jomal had the square eyes and. But that it was stupid, man. Yeah. But it was first fun, band, you know? first band, ma- mellow pa tayo lahat. Eh. Yeah. But yeah. by the fifth band, everybody was already on stage. Yep. The thing, cause I was, we wouldn't go home. We would stay, you know, 
Some people would go home, of course, but yeah. a lot of people would stay. So it was nationwide, like, it was right? Nationwide. Yeah, it Dude, was nationwide. Like, overnight at a. Uh, yeah, we yeah, would right? say. Although, wala, we, unless the show was canceled, we wouldn't see each other really in the hotel. Mm. Like, walang inuman sa hotel unless, you know, it was the last uh, night and you were still uh, high yes, from yes, the okay. stage, so you would hang out. Pa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Usually by the time we got to the hotel, you don't remember it. Though. Yeah, we were, we were, we were, we were. You know, that's when your adrenaline's coming down, so you just want to sleep, get up, and go. But like, if the show was canceled, fucking forget about it, brother. We're in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Yung first show, cause it's in a city, and then you, the next day you take a road trip to, yep, uh, to wherever the next, next city, city, and yeah. then you fly out of that mm, place. That's you know. right. But yeah, man, good, good, you know. It's good, good memories. Good memories. Good memories. Actually, one of the... Also, gusto ko rin tanongin. Kasi yung akustika, I mm. think that's my favorite. Parang nakagulat lang. Can, can you tell us more about that? Like, ano yung process? Sa ano yung music museum, right? Yeah, uh, we did that in music museum. That was museum. like one of the most parang parang iconic moments ng OPM. I can't, I can't remember... Who came up with the with the concept, concept. of acoustic? Yeah. Um, but obviously somebody did. I doubt it was somebody. I think it was someone in the band. Mm. I can't remember though. I can't remember if it, if it was me or if it was. I I can't remember who actually said, "Hey, let's do an acoustic show." But once that was pitched, you know, it was it was. Well, may, um, may madrigal singers ba? Kasama, yeah, right? UP. The yeah. UP ano, singing ambassadors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so all of that, that that was live wire productions, I think. Mm. So, like, see, that, that's another thing. I don't know if live wire had pitched it to us. Could have been also that live wire, the production company said, hey, we want to <coughs> do an acoustic show. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. But who was live wire? They were a production company. Yeah, yeah I mean, who, who was there? Oh, I, I don't. I don't. Who Richie Fedelino ba yan? or or her sister, Sina. The Fedeli, Fedel, Rich, uh, Luchelle was Luchelle managing. Was yeah, with so was managing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I thought. Oh, I remember Live Wire. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I don't think they, they were, weren't. They weren't. Yeah. It was two other sisters. Okay. Two other sisters running Live Wire. Okay. Oh, the Ilongo sisters. Okay. Can't remember right now. Anyway. Yeah. What's that? So, so there once. Once that happened, they said, okay, we'll do an acoustic show. Um, that was it. It was just, you know. And Manuel, the way Manuel is, is if we're going to do an acoustic show, it's not going to be bada bada. We're going to sit down and we're going to actually write the songs for acoustic. So, you, you know, really we wrote got some of the songs. Yeah, that was, everything was, uh, you know, we went into a practice thing and then. We thought of how to present the songs in a way that would work, you know. Like even even having a second mm -hmm. guitar with Dave, it was like Dave here, and then Dave had specific mm -hmm. things that because Dave is also like that, you know. Dave isn't. I mean, Dave can be bara bara, but if you're gonna get technical, Dave will get fucking technical, you know. So Manuel was like, "This is the things I'm gonna be doing." You know, you can't be doing the same things as me. Let's do something else to make it interesting. So Dave did his own things, and, and then, not like Tirso. Like if you get Tirso on, it's gonna, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, then, okay, then. You know, it's like the fastest practice in the world. It's like, okay, so I'm gonna be doing this. Uh, okay, 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 now I got it, I got it. I just started playing. Okay, I got it, I got it. Okay, then. And then the show is just, you know, rock and roll. It's just rock and roll. So anyway, there. So. It was an actual thing, and then once we had our parts down, mm -hmm. you know, they got, you know, like how productions are, like serious productions are. You have, you have, you rent space and you run the show, and all of that. And we did that. I think where did we practice? We practiced at. I remember it was a really nice place. It was mm -hmm. the Apo. Oh, third line. Is that in Katipunan, Apo? yeah. Apple Hiking Society yeah, Studio. Yeah, yeah, in Katipunan. Yeah, that was where we, it was great. I didn't even know what place like that existed. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, may ganito pala. Ganda. It's like a big open yes. thing, right? You go in the basement. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that was it. And we did the whole show there, and we were like, wow, this sounds great. And we did the show, and man, that was one of those nights where 
you know, everything aligns and the stars align and everything was... Nandun ka ba, Darren? Did Wala, you pero it? like... You have the album? I watch, yeah, the DVD, lahat. lahat. After... Yung intro, like, may kakanta muna na choir. So, maso... Tama eh. Who was the musical director? So, the... Again, man. I suck. I forget my name if it wasn't something I had to say every day. But, yeah, he was another one. Great, you know. He's very professional. professional. You guys had a recent tour with Razorback abroad, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Who was who was in the band? <clears throat> I what ha, was was Mon still there? Oh no, that was like right before. Yeah. You guys left. Right so we before. were we were we were we had scheduled the trip. We wouldn't have scheduled the trip if Mon didn't give his blessing. That was March, mm-hmm. right? Um. Or April. Basically, we Mon passed away. The day before we went to the airport. Tama, I was texting Tirso. Yeah, the day before we went to the airport. So we had all seen each other the day after finding out he passed away, mm. which was pretty fucked up. Um, but was he supposed to play bass with you guys? No. No, who was playing so, bass? So, Marco. Marco ah, Cuneta. Mar- okay. Who's, now, who plays bass for Razorback now, right? Yes. Okay. And for me also. Oh, for you, okay. So, um, <clears throat> the way it worked was, this tour, the tour was booked uh March 2019 before the pandemic yeah right before the pandemic and then the pandemic hit and then you know but everybody was already you know and Manuel had gotten I know uh, Patrick had pitched it to us mm-hmm. and um you know he talked to Mon and Mon couldn't travel because of uh you know certain certain wait no it wasn't before the pandemic then oh my god my memory anyway but stop mon couldn't travel because of papers Mm -hmm. he couldn't travel because of papers and he didn't want for us not to do it um, because of him so he told me go ahead you you go ahead ah so you somebody was see i know was rehearsing bass for you already so he knew the parts already he he really wasn't traveling simon no, Mon wasn't traveling. Okay, you but really Mon, had a bass player. Uh, I thought, yeah, I thought he was going. Yeah, already bass with me. Okay, like, okay. Two, you know, two years, so he knew. How was how was the tour? It was great. It was great, man. It was with with Razorback. That would have been fun, mm-hmm. right? It was great. It was exactly what we needed mm-hmm. at the time. Yeah. Yeah, because you know we were able to be with each other, be boys, have memories. Talk shit, all of that <laughs> stuff. Who do you know, guys? I mean, who else I mean, played like, with even, you? You know, with with the whole Mon situation, right? Because, so so it was a way for us to deal with it, mm. you know. And not the you know not the sitting fuck you know because yeah. if if we didn't have that that's because that's some heavy shit you know. So. So yeah, so that was great. That was just what we needed, you know, and we we came to grips with it on stage. We didn't do any santi shit of course, or any of, of that, you know. Like I mean I mean, I think they were talking about it and at some point like you know, should we have a uh um uh what do you call it? Tribute. Yeah, a tribute and should we should we do and I was like, fuck. Are you crazy? The last thing Mon would want. Mon would say shit. Yeah, you'd say fuck, fuck <laughs> that. Shit. <laughs> fuck that shit, you know. When I was alive, nobody fucking called me and shit. Now that mm. I'm dead, you're going to fucking be doing all this stuff, mm. you know. It's like, just play the fucking show. Play it the best. Make sure the bass player who's doing my parts doesn't fucking suck. <laughs> and that's it. And Marco doesn't fucking suck, man. He's good. Yeah, he's cool. Mm. He's cool. So... So that's what we did, man. And we celebrated him that way. And it was a great, great tour. Did, did Dave and Perf play in the in some of the shows? No, no Perf. Perf didn't play, but Dave, Dave did. Dave, Dave showed Dave, up. Dave played. Yeah. Dave played uh, all the uh, um, Cow, Southern California gigs. Mm. Yeah, man. This fucking cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great, man. It's great seeing it. It's so awesome looking. You know, looking at the stage and seeing Dave. Dave's fucking amazing. So with so, your, you're currently touring now solo, right? Yeah. So been, how? Been doing it for a what's while. your current 
setup? Like, what's the current lineup? So, two guitars, man. Mm. So now we're doing all the Wolfgang songs with two guitars, which is, which is cool. Who's playing guitars? Um, Frey Zambrano. Frey. Yeah, he came on board. And then, you know Paul? Paul from Monkey No Hero. Yes. Yeah, so Paul's on second guitar. And then... Um, Drums. Marco Cuneta's mm. bass. And then Walter De La, De La Cruz. Mm. You know Walter? Yeah, 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 yeah. What band was he with? He plays also with a lot of bands, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, Walter, he's great, man. Fucking awesome. It's the, what is it? It's the most. Yeah, it's like that. It's Bog Chak, you know? Bog Chak. Bog Chak. Bog Chak. I like, I like Bog Chak. I like that Bog Chak shit, you know? Just give me the one. Um, but yeah, so it's great. I love it. Um, we're playing, uh, of course, we're playing the Wolfgang stuff because I need it. And then we're doing a lot of the new, you know, the new stuff, which is Heavy Guts. So, Are you coming out with a new album soon? Yeah. Coming out with a new album in February. It's going to oh, be released. That's next month. Yeah, yeah, next month, man. We've been working <laughs> what on label? this thing. Backspacer. Backspacer, okay. Uh, yeah, Rob. they're going to be putting it out. Yeah, yeah on, on record? Or yeah. On vinyl. vinyl. On vinyl. Wow. Nice, and nice, then nice. they said, and we're going to be putting out, I think this is our first, it's going to be on CD too. So we're going to be putting it out on CD as well. This new format, CD. Yeah, man, this yeah. brand new format. It, <laughs> it lasts forever, kids. It's digital. <laughs> yeah, digital and it never ever breaks or anything, right? It doesn't flake or anything. Before we let you go, tell us about the book. Yeah. yeah the oh, okay. Yeah. So Not that was another very... thing. Like the pandemic um, was a chance to... Like, think of all these things that... You know, you have all these ideas that you want to do. Mm. And you can't do it because you don't have the time. What did the pandemic do? Gave me a shitload of time. <laughs> so I said, okay, here's what I want to do. I wanted to do a book. I wanted to do an album. I wanted to do a game. I wanted to do... So I started working on them. And, you know, now they're slowly coming out. So we came up with a book. I contacted um, a friend of mine who I actually had just met. Her name's Ramona Gaston. A fucking great artist. Um, and I said, hey, I want to do a book. It's going to be based on the, the, the lyrics of Darkness Fell. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what to draw because I mean, when I saw the way she, her artwork was, that's why it made me think of her to do the book, right? Because Where did you see her live or on Instagram or? I was doing a, an exhibit and she was one of the co-exhibitors there and she had actually, actually, no, she had reached, reached, reached? Is that a word? Reached, reached out. Reached out? Yeah. Reached out. Okay, it's a word, okay. <laughs> I thought the gin was the giving gin. me new vocabulary. <laughs> so she had reached out to me and said, hey, I'm going to do a show. Do you want to you wanna join the show, the exhibit? And I said, sure. And then I saw her work. She had shown it to me when she said that. I guess to say okay, I'm a real artist, I'm not. Some <laughs> bullshit. So I saw it. I was like, "Wow, cool!" And I, I said, "Fuck, this is it. This girl is the one." I'll show you. I'll show you some samples of her shit, man. It's fucking amazing. When are you releasing the book? February. Twenty. So everything's fucking yeah. in February. Yeah. In nineteen East, right? Nineteen East. We're gonna release it. We already did pre-selling, and we sold a shitload of that. And then we'll actually launch it in, in February. Are, are you guys playing? On yeah, me and Manuel are gonna play. But wait, so wow. so anyway, so that was how I came up with the book, right? And the artist, I said, okay, you do that. And then I thought, okay, now we got the pictures and the words, but what? Wouldn't it be cool to add another dimension mm. so that mm. while you're while you're reading it, your mind is thinking of the lyrics, you're thinking of the the melody, singing it in your head, and then you look at the pictures and you get all of this, and so you're you're doing all this. Wouldn't it be cool to add an extra dimension? which is sound, right? So I tapped Manuel and I said, hey man, I'm doing a book, you wanna <laughs> collaborate in it? You can make a, an instrumental version of the song that's brand new, Kaum Bahala, that people can listen to while they look at the book and read the book and all. That way they get this and he was like, yeah, game. So game, so there. So it's gonna be a book with music wow. and Super great, amazing images. Wow. 
Bohustika. Bohustika. That's right. Yep. You should That's make right. a video and call it Video Kestika. <laughs> video Kestika. Well, I was thinking it's before. It's like the, the 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 music and the the pictures and the lyrics. <laughs> video Kestika. <laughs> video Kestika. Actually, man, I went into a I went into a, a fucking one of those. What do you call it? Where they sell where they sell appliances. An appliance store, I guess, <laughs> would be it. and they had one of those karaoke. And I'm like, and I'm like buying this thing. I think it was Metro Gaisano. I mean, Metro ah, Gaisano, yeah, yeah. and the fucking electric shop is there. And I'm doing something here, and then I'm like, I know that. And I turn and I look, and there's a fucking girl dancing on a TV like that, and it's acoustic, ah, karaoke. Wow. In the video, and wow. you, you know wow. they they play when you, once you walk oh, in, yeah, they have it ready. <laughs> I, I usually get the hell up, but I've never seen it, and I was like, who, how, who's making money off of that shit? You know, we're not. How, I mean, yeah. how does how does who no, gets I the think, licensing? Yeah, I think the label does. The label, the label does. The really, label, yeah, you're yeah. making money off of it, not as much as the label, but. No. It's licensed because Sony they can't release it. Us, uh, <laughs> Sony doesn't even Hello, exist Wally. in the Philippines. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no I think some again, cause somebody does that. They can't do that. Mm -hmm. They just can't do that. I know some... Uh, you have the, to buy the rights see, from Steve the Steve of Typecast does a lot of the MIDI programming thing of those songs and it has to be licensed. That's why I know. Yeah. So we, we probably get paid a little be. bit but not as much as the... What do you call it? The publisher. <laughs> yeah. 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 but And they don't care about the... Uh, the, qu quality, the, quality, the quality, yeah, because it's all ping dong ping yeah. dong ping dong ping dong ping dong ping dong. Or whatever videos there. Yeah, I know, yeah, really. So Although the, the girl is a lot, you know, more good looking than I am, so <laughs> I appreciate that they put her. Easy, <laughs> easier on the eyes. Yeah, no, easier, really. Really. <laughs> really. <laughs> Darren. Uh, oh, uh, so being, I mean, I want a man just, just wanted to, to ask, like, uh, aside from. Aside from everything that you told like anything uh, you wanted to share? Na, I mean, your current projects. Is it going to theater? Yeah. Right. So, I did. Uh, I did a uh, what was it in in the CCP? They had what do you call it when it's a uh, super virgin lab fest. Oh, okay, okay. So I was asked to do this uh, this um, two man play, which I did. It was cool. It was called uh, Fermata, and it was mm. it was actually a sensitive topic. It was like I was a I played a, uh, it's like two guys dealing with uh, sexual uh, molestation, you know. Mm. One, Who directed? Um, Gil Gilan Luarca. Okay, it's great, great director, man. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I I took that on. It's like. It's, you know, with everything, it's like, is it challenging? Will it be fun? Will it be, you know, something new? Something to keep me going artistically? So, yeah. So, that came and it clicked all those boxes. So, I said, yes. Dancing na lang, triple. Ay, no, wala, 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 wala. No, that, 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 I can tell uh, you right now. That's good. That's Acting, <laughs> singing, dancing na lang. <laughs> that, that'll never happen. That's the one thing that'll never happen. Tayo na dancing. Actually, maybe tonight. <laughs> I can dance us out of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I can dance us out. Do you have like a, a like a woo woo? We do. Exit? But, but it's not playing right now. Okay, but well we can we'll da dance. We, yeah, we've I'll never dance. danced out this uh, out, episode. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no, no. Seriously, uh, last question. Okay. Tell us about because we're we're a little. Why you last? Know. Am I am I boring you? Now? No, this is more than one hour already. <laughs> no fucking way, man! <laughs> Holy shit! Wow, we're like a Scorsese picture. <laughs> we're okay. one hour already. We don't want to keep you. We're, go we're going to drink upstairs. Okay, okay. sounds but good. But last question: How how has fatherhood affected you as an artist? Oh, um, well, I not not as an artist. As an artist, I think I'm still more or less the same, but. More as a person. As a person. Yeah. As a person, it has uh, grounded me. It has made me more, just a better, better person, you know. Um, and it has given me the understanding that now I have a responsibility to put, um, to put two people, you know, not, not put them because I already did that, but to, to raise two people that should not be sagabals to this fucking world, mm -hmm. you know? We got enough sagabals in the fucking world. <laughs> so, and that's a big one, you know? 
and that is my main focus to make them good human beings that can help you know be a contribution to the world so there on that note thank you very much thank, thank you, you. Thank we you. shall continue this upstairs. Upstairs. upstairs thank you dance out dance out